And letting go of fear is the key thing. And when you get to that point where you're observing your mind and you're observing your emotions instead of being them, it's amazing how fear, and I can only talk for myself and talking to other people who've been through it, fear starts to leave you. Because what is there to fear when you've reached that point, not only of realization, but of observing the world from a point of view of that which is always has been, always will be, um, infinite consciousness, eternal consciousness, which is what we are. The other thing that um, it holds us in servitude is insecurity. How many people are always put a mask to the world? It's, it's not who they really are. It's what they think other people think they should be. So instead of putting ourselves to the world, we put this mask to the world that we think is acceptable to the world. Consciousness does not do insecurity, and it certainly doesn't do putting masks on to fulfill uh, other people's uh, perceptions of what you should be. Consciousness is all possibility. It is um, all potential. You know, people uh, think about, uh, you know, one consciousness and they think, oh, that means, yeah, I'm one consciousness, yeah, I'm one consciousness, I'm one consciousness. If it's in some clone-like state, consciousness, uh, in the firm that I'm talking about at the infinite level of us, is all possibility. Therefore, when we celebrate our uniqueness and celebrate our diversity and celebrate the diversity and uniqueness of each other, we are celebrating the fact that we are infinite consciousness because we're celebrating all possibility. What happens is when we get caught in mind, that's when you get the clone. Yeah, our mind, yeah, our mind, yes, our mind. All the bloody clones line up, always look, all look the same and all the rest of it and speak the same and think the same. That's mind. So um, celebrating uniqueness and being conscious are the same things. And that's why if you look, the, the more mind has taken over, the more this, 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 this earth has become more and more uniform. And as we become more and more conscious, we will be celebrating diversity and diversity will start to return in the way we live our lives. Um, the key thing to breaking the spell is breaking out of belief systems. Um, it's, it's a good question. What would consciousness do? How would consciousness see this? Well, like I said earlier, consciousness doesn't do religion. Because religion is a mind phenomenon that sees everything in terms of um, uh, a partners and rules and regulations and all the rest of it. Consciousness doesn't do that. So religion's out. If we are going to be conscious, then religion's gone. Politics. Well, <laughs> consciousness vote. I mean, we have, what's going on? Consciousness doesn't do belief systems like politics. So that's gone. That belief system. Um, race. It doesn't do race. You know, the, the, the human form is just a vehicle for consciousness to experience this reality. It doesn't do my uh, genetic spacesuit is better than yours and because yours is of different color or comes from a different background. I'm better than you and I'm the master race or I'm the chosen race and all the rest of it. Consciousness doesn't do that. Mind does that. When we think in those terms, we're in mind, not consciousness. And self-identity. If we have a self-identity that says, I am my body, and I am my name, and that is me, that is who I am, we're in mind. When we say my name and my, my body and my life is my experience, the experience of my consciousness, then we're recognizing who we really are, which is consciousness having an experience. Yeah. What, why do you think these people see the media as being so important? You know, the, the reality is quite different. You know, the, the media isn't really important. It's how we use it. It's how we view it. You know, the, the reality is that, that we, as a society, in this, this hypnotized and almost catatonic and comatose state, we have given our free will for everything that's going on. We've given our free will consent to the state the planet is in today. Most people in modern societies, I mean, you know, we, we, we saturate our minds with all sorts of unhealthy things that are not good for us. I mean, things that are served up for us on television. And people are quite addicted to their televisions. Most people spend their time consuming violence, pornography, greed, selfishness, hatred, you know, incessant bad news and fear and terror. I mean, when was the last time a lot of people out there just, just stopped and thought about something really, really beautiful and, and really pure? 
You know, something wonderful that really warms your heart and puts that energy into the field. You know, when was the last time you stopped and did that? The planet is the way it is because of our collective thoughts about the planet. And those people out there who, who don't affect positive change, they are complicit in their inaction. And every time you, you look the other way when you see an injustice, your thought at the subconscious level of creation to the creator is your allowance of these things to occur. And in so doing, you're serving the wrong purpose. Those who think violent thoughts against those whom they perceive to be the rulers of this world, be careful what you wish for, folks, because all thoughts and words are created. And there was a statement I read somewhere, I'm not sure who it was by, that said, in order to choose the positive path, at least 51% of our thoughts and actions must be dedicated to the service of others. But for the negative part, at least 95% of our thoughts and actions must be directed towards self-service. And between those two points lies the sinkhole of indifference. And it's truly a sinkhole, folks. Indifference is the vein of consciousness. To lead you down a path of repetition that becomes ever more negative you know it's, it's the will to serve self and it becomes ever more negative and polarized because negativity is necessary folks it's very important for without negativity there can be no positivity and without the negative there can't be the positive it's all about free will and freedom of choice my friends and if negativity did not exist there would be no choice because there would be nothing for us to choose between. It's all about service to self or service to others. That's the whole thing about this life, service to self or service to others. Do the right thing in all that you do, or do what is right for you personally. That's the choice, folks. And it's a pretty easy choice to make once you begin to understand this sort of thing. I choose service to others. And I don't try to wake up people to the reality of these things out of fear. I don't try to wake people up to what's going on in the world because I'm worried about the future. I do it because I love you. I do it because I love you all. I truly do. I've never met a person that I didn't love, even the most negative. You know, some people will just say these are evil people. I don't see them as evil. I see them as polarized. And it's necessary for them to be that way. I mean, otherwise they wouldn't be that way. Because having these polarized energies in the world is the only way that consciousness can ascend into something more positive. So can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already happened? Neuroscience says it's absolutely possible. Now, your personality, your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. It's that simple. And your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. So the present personality who's sitting here today, you, has created the present personal reality called your life. Would you agree? Would you also agree then if you wanted to create a new personal reality, that on a fundamental level you would have to change the thoughts that you are thinking the behaviors and habits that you're demonstrating, and the emotions that you've memorized that's become part of your identity. And most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it never works. We have to become somebody else. So then as you keep thinking the same thoughts, performing the same actions, and living by the same experiences that produce the same emotions, there's a principle in neuroscience that says nerve cells that fire together wire together. And if you keep repeating the same states of mind and body over and over again, your brain begins to fi fire in the same sequences in the same patterns and same combinations. And whenever you make your brain work in a certain way, that's called mind. Mind is the brain in action. So as you remind yourself every day who you think you are, you're causing your brain to fire in the exact same ways. And as they fire and wire in the same patterns over time, the brain moves into a very finite signature, and that's called your personality. Now, that box in your brain isn't literally a box, 
but it's the most commonly wired, neurologically fired programs that run redundantly because we keep doing the same things over and over again. To change your mind then is to make the brain work in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations to begin to make the brain work differently. And the one ingredient that allows us to do that is knowledge or information. Because every time you learn something new, you make a new connection in your brain. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new connections. Remembering is maintaining or sustaining those connections. So now, every time you have a thought, you make a chemical. And if you have a great thought or an unlimited thought or a joyful thought, you turn on a set of circuits in your brain that fires in a very specific sequence, pattern, and combination that produces a level of mind that turns on another part of the brain that makes a chemical for you to begin to feel exactly the way you were just thinking, great or unlimited or joyful. It's not about me, it's about the information, it's about the realization of the reality that we're experiencing behind the smoke screens and the um, illusions uh, that we're given and told um, to believe in. Um, so, you know, in the old, um, the old um, yellow brick road, Wizard of Oz, they seem to be dealing with an all powerful force. And when they looked behind the curtain, it was an old bloke who had no power at all. And this cult expresses its power by persuading the target population that it has power. Its power is in our acquiescence to that illusion of power. We now have the chance to break the spell, to break the, um, the mind spell and see behind the curtain. And what we'll find is something that's not powerful at all once we stop acquiescing to it. And that's my, that's where I, well, it's where I want things to go, but it's also where I know things can go. Because in the last few weeks, worldwide, that spell has been broken. And at the same time, this cult has broken cover. It's walked into the room where we can see it. And you know what's happened? The frickin' door has clicked behind it. And we're now in a different game. And I tell you this, I have tracked this, these people, this cult, for 30 years full time. And I've seen what they do, and I've seen how they act, and I've seen their staggering, shocking levels of psychopathy. And you know what? I don't fear them one smear because I am more powerful than they are and they freaking know it. I ain't come here to fail and I freaking won't. There's always people out there who are doing far better than you on pretty much anything you want to imagine. And if all you're doing is seeing yourself in their reflected light, let's say, then it's going to be pretty damn dismal. But it's not a good comparison because, well, first of all, there's danger in just comparing yourself to others, period, because they're not you. And God only knows what struggles they had to undertake to get to where they were or what burdens they're currently carrying that you're not aware of. But you can certainly contrast yourself with yourself. And that's a lot better. It is the only way. Well, it's also the only way of really, of really measuring anything approximating proper improvement. You can actually tell when you're a little better than you were yesterday. Right. And, and you can actually do that. That's another thing that's so interesting about it is that 
you can actually make yourself a little better in some way, pretty much, well, I don't know if it's at every moment, but you can certainly do it every day. Be careful who you share good news with, because you want to share good news with people who are going to be genuinely happy for you. And be careful who you share bad news with, because that's equally tricky. You want someone who will listen to you when you're having trouble and allow you your grief. Beauty calls people to their higher being, I would say, and to make friends with beauty is to introduce yourself very carefully to one of the mysteries of life that make it worth living. There's never been a better time for the majority of people to be alive. And the future, although we're vulnerable and terrible things can always happen to us, it's hard to make a case that the future doesn't look comparatively positive. We're becoming extremely technologically sophisticated and the world is changing at an incredibly rapid rate and the only way we're going to be able to manage that in a positive way is if each of us or as many of us as possible are capable of making wise and careful and truthful decisions and if we do that then maybe things can continue to improve. You don't get people to stand up on their own two feet and to adopt responsibility if everything is given to them. And that, that's, that's a real conundrum. You know, maybe you're in California, see someone speeding down the road in a, in a convertible Porsche, and you think, oh man, what a lucky bastard. And the truth of the matter is that he's thinking about wrapping his expensive sports car around the next cement pillar that he comes close to. You know, you, you can't tell, and people have hard lives, and, and even people who are comparatively fortunate have hard lives. And, the ideal that you're observing that makes you jealous and resentful is in large part an illusion that's created by your own mind. As you leave the herd and the crowd and perhaps the cult of mediocrity and rise to being a game changer, it's a very disruptive act. And you actually threaten the masses of people around you. And that's why every visionary was first ridiculed before they were revered. And I'm sure you've experienced it. You want to say, you say, you know, I want to take my fitness to a whole new level of world class, or I want to take my craft to a whole new level of world class, or maybe you're raising your game financially and then you share it with those you love or your friend, your friends, and maybe your friends are those you love and they laugh at you. And how many times have we given up on a dream because we were mocked by the people around you? And all I'm suggesting to you is when you get laughed at and ridiculed and when people don't understand your next level of world class, that just means you've got a great dream and that just means you're on the path of growth. So be a game changer. What are some tactics? Well, I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of key tactics or the rules of game changing. And the first one is really this. No idea works unless you have the courage to do the work. Ideation without execution is delusion. And so there are people who say, well, I went to a course or I went to a, I joined an online membership program or I read a book, but my life didn't change. And I wanna to say to them with great respect, your life could have changed, but you didn't do the work required to make the change happen. That's almost like a, an athlete saying, I want to be a gold medalist at the next Olympics, but I went to the gym for four days and I didn't get the medal. I mean, the reality is an idea is the starting point on the pro process to get you to where you want to get to. So just remember that really building something great is all about execution. When you look at a Steve Jobs or an Elon Musk or when you look at a Nelson Mandela or Mother Teresa, when you look at a Da Vinci or a Tesla, all those people had the vision and then they outworked everyone around them to execute on the vision until the product was done. And it's not only execution, it's the grit. Remember grit from previous master, mastery sessions, which is you get knocked down, do you give up or do you continue? And any game changer has literally out persisted everyone around them. And when you get full of self doubt, which you will do on the path to world class, do you continue? So the first idea is just remember, no idea is gonna work unless you have the courage to do the work. It's all about high levels of execution intelligence. Great leaders and game changers have 
a bias towards getting things done. And it's like a muscle, the more you do, the more you're gonna to wanna to do, you start building this incredible momentum. The momentum feels internal confidence. The confidence wants you to make even more gains and it becomes this upward spiral of unbelievable execution. And a weird thing happened as I started doing that. I was actually learning a lot more. And so I was able to convey that to the students and I was able to help the students make their films better. And it made me realize, whoa, there's this weird reciprocal loop. I'm a college dropout. I was homeless, lived in a car for three years. I've lost every single thing I had, family included. I've been written off so many times, but today, the person that you sitting in front of you is a process. Then next is how you feel about the future. We've got to have the future well designed. The future is called the promise. The promise of the future can be an awesome force. The harder I work over here, then go and explain it, they actually can take that knowledge and put it to use building skill sets, getting better at something. And I started thinking, is that something that I could do for myself? And at that moment, these two very successful entrepreneurs walk into my class. And at that time, I was obsessed with two things. I wanted to get rich and I wanted six pack abs. Now I grew up in a morbidly obese family. So for me, that was real, man. And I used to be 60 pounds heavier than I am now. And I wanted those six pack abs, man. I just had no idea how I was gonna get it. And I remember the first time that somebody told me, I think you already have abs, it's just under the fat. I wanna talk to you for a moment about the process. Because see, one way to get a person to really follow you is to be the example of what you get, of what you're trying to get them to follow. You know, my daddy used to tell me all the time, he said, son, best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them, because you can't help the cause. Your brain is divided into two halves, positive and negative, good and evil. Each half of your brain has millions of factory workers on each side. You got a million factory workers on the positive side. You got a million factory workers on the negative side. And I thought, what? Like that doesn't even make sense. Cause I had done like a bunch of crunches and I'm like, I still don't see them. So I don't know what the problem is. Maybe it was all the licorice. I had a thing. So these two guys walk in, very accomplished entrepreneurs, ripped, six-pack ab, bodybuilder types, and they said, hey, you're coming to the world with your hand out. If you want to control your art, you have to control your resources. So if you want to get back in the saddle and actually become a filmmaker, you're going to have to learn to control the resources. So come with us, be a copywriter, but understand this is a startup. You can have any role in the company that you want. You just have to become the right person for that job. And so I took them at their word and I pivoted and I left my teaching career, which had safety. And I looked to my wife and I said, this may fail, but I've got to at least give it a shot. And my wife said the words that have become famous for me, which is I bet on you. At the forefront of each one of those factories in your brain is a foreman. You got forming positive and you got forming negative. You are in charge. You're the boss of the factory. So let me show you how this works. You got a remote control. You go to your house tonight and you press that power button and you press it. When you point it at the TV, what do you expect to happen? You expect TV to come on. You press the power button, you expect the TV to come on. If you want to watch HBO and HBO is channel 300 and you press 300 and then you press select what do you expect to come on that TV and what comes on that TV so now since your brain is in two halves let me show you how this works you wake up in the morning and you say man I don't feel myself today I got up on the wrong side of the bed I'm not a morning person now what my wife was betting on wasn't that I already knew how to do what they wanted me to do, because she knew I didn't. What she was betting on in me is the same thing that each and every one of you have, 
which is the ability to learn. And so I went into it knowing I was not the right person for any job in that company. I'd never been in a company like that before. I'd been totally focused on film. This was software, it was security software. It was nothing that I had any interest in, but I wanted to get rich. And so I did it. And for six and a half years, I put my head down like those early days in my dorm room and I worked my ass off around the clock. I didn't take vacations, meaning if I went somewhere, I would literally, guys, this is real, I would take a camera so that I could watch what was going on back at the facility. Designing the future, there's two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension and the other is with anticipation. I promise you, in my travels around the world, most people face the future with apprehension. And here's why, they don't have it well designed. They've sort of left that up to someone else to fix. But here's the best way to face the future with anticipation. You can face the future with anticipation if the future is clear, if the future is well designed. In setting goals, it's very simple. Number one, decide what you want. You just take a little time and sit down and say, what do I want? What kind of skills do I want? What kind of income do I want for the future? Where would I like to go? Places I'd like to visit? Habits I'd like to acquire? Skills I'd like to have? Right, so everything. I'm down here, Equalizer 1, 2. If you come out with 6, I'm going to see that joint. And Equalizer 1 and 2 is the same movie. It ain't nothing different about it, but Denzel in that joke. And I'm like, Denzel, let's go. So I fell in love with Denzel, I guess, maybe back in the day, like with Malcolm X, Glory, right? So I go see anything Denzel. So Denzel said he had a coach. And I looked at my life and I was like, yo, I don't got a coach. I need to get a coach. Denzel is paying somebody to help him act. And that's probably why he the best. Because somebody else probably is an actor. And guess what happened? The more opportunities they got, the more cocky they got, because they were getting roles and they probably fell off. So we could probably name some actors that were sweet 10 years ago that you don't see today. Denzel's still out there, he's still the man, right? So I was like, I'm giving me a coach. So Anthony Flynn was in my circle already and he was like, he's the CEO. Economics, friendships, people you'd like to meet. When you've thought about what you want for the future, make a list. If the future gets clear, the price gets easier. Because you got to remember, for every promise, there's a price to pay. Everybody's got to pay the price. Everybody's got to do the deal. Everybody's got to do the disciplines. But here's what I've discovered. If the promise is clear and powerful, the price is easy to pay. The price is some classes. The price is a few books. The price is a few disciplines. The price is finding something that'll make your life better, make you grow, make you change, make you develop. So the first part of the key is to design the promise. Then what is the price to pay? I'm telling you, the price will be easy, no matter where you are, where you come from. Color doesn't matter, religion doesn't matter, where you grew up doesn't matter, circumstances don't matter. I'm telling you, if you'll make the promise of the future clear for yourself. Coach, you know, he the, he the CEO, coach is coach. I'm like, all right then, if you coach the CEO, I'm a CEO, I need to get coached. And I remember we went in this room in, in um, the Western Hotel. It was about four o'clock in the morning. And I remember he broke some stuff down to me and I had the best 2019 I ever had. Imagine you getting coach and you super talented. I was just living off talent. I had no focus or direction. I was just like, turn the light on, go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I saved so much time and so much energy that in 2020, I'm able to lead a corporate arena and just do, I'm just doing schools. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm, the coaching was so sweet that the area I dominated in, I'm coming out that, I'm coming out of the arena, and I'm focusing on schools. Because what did I learn when I was with? When I here's the crazy thing. He was like, "All right, E, you all over the place. You got a million ideas, but we're gonna do three buckets, right?" And I knew the three buckets was kind of like, "Okay, I'm gonna work with you because you're talented, so I'm gonna give you three buckets." But that's a lot. I wish that I could tell you that the load you carry will get lighter. It won't. As time passes, you'll find it will get heavier. The mountain that you need to climb will get higher 
the ocean that you need to cross will get wider. Trust me when I tell you that you don't want to wait. Indecision is a decision. I was the only person that didn't have a window. They literally put me in the room with all the computer servers. But starting from there, I knew I could wow people because I was willing to grind it out. And Carl, our videographer, had his family over and we live around, at that time we lived around the corner from each other. Now we live on the same block, random, right? Christmas was over, we're just going to the house, just eating dinner, it, it, it just was a random, a random night. The decision to fail, the decision to waste your potential. Time won't wait for you. Time doesn't wait for anyone. The clock keeps ticking in life. There are no timeouts, no breaks, and no rest stops. Remember something else, that if plan A doesn't work, there are 25 other letters in the alphabet. This isn't three strikes and you're out. This isn't baseball, it's the real world. And that means there's no limit on how many times you're allowed to try. And that is one of the most valuable things that anybody can do. All right, now that company, we grew to the point where in 2010, it was a technology company. It was named as the 42nd fastest growing technology company in North America. I had suffered a lot. I hadn't taken a day off in like six and a half years, except for Christmas in fairness. I wouldn't let my wife go on a vacation because I was so hell bent to get rich. And then I realized almost eight and a half years in, here we are. We've just been named the 42nd fastest growing technology company in North America. We're making money, we're winning awards. Beautiful conference room overlooking the Pacific Ocean and I turn to my partners and I say, I'm completely miserable, I quit. The only time your dream dies is when you decide to quit. You need to be ready for what's to come. When the darkness sets in, when you feel like you can't take another step forward, believe in yourself. You will keep going, you will persevere. You will weather the storm. Trust in yourself, the kind of trust a bird has. You see, the bird doesn't put its trust in the branch. It puts its trust in its own wings. So when the branch breaks, it can still fly. Again, you can weather any storm. You can withstand anything the world throws at you. Remember that the safest path brings the least reward. Stop being afraid of what could go wrong and start believing in what could go right. There may be a million reasons you're afraid to follow your dreams, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after what your heart desires. Dare to face your fears, dare to take risks, dare to be better. And I hand back your equity. I'm not gonna cross the finish line. I don't think I should get anything for that. And they said what are now famous words for me, we could do this without you, but we don't want to. And in that moment, I realized what had been missing. I realized the reason I was living the cliche of money can't buy happiness. I was realizing why what Tony Robbins says about success without fulfillment being the worst kind of failure was because what I cared about was connection. I'd gotten into it and gotten to know these guys and along the way had become so myopically focused on this promise I'd made my, to myself as a kid that I never stopped to ask why do I want to get rich? What, what is it that I plan to do with the money? The money in and of itself, it's inert. It just sits there. I'm sure you guys have a bunch of it in your pocket right now and it doesn't do anything, but it has latent potential. But the question is, what are you gonna do with that potential? Don't let pride confuse your tears. You've got to let that out. Sometimes you've got to let it go. When I lost my mom years ago, that was the hardest thing that I had to deal with. And to this day, I still think about that woman that gave me life. And I have my moments when I'm happy about the good times, but I also have my moments when she left this world. But that's just one thing, that's just one circumstance, there are many circumstances I can talk about, but I continue to move on, everybody gets knocked down no matter how tough you think you are, you're gonna fall, and when you fall, sometimes you fall real hard. And somehow we got to talking, and Carl's wife is from Barbados, and she didn't have citizenship, so unfortunately, she was in the States without citizenship, and so she had to stay in school in order to eventually get her citizenship. So she did her master's degree, you know, she was in her PhD, and it was weird. It was just like, yo, E.T. I don't know how it happened, but it was like, yo, E.T., my wife is going to get her degree before you get her, yours. Right? I'm an American citizen. Like, I had already been in the program for a few years, and, you know, she, and, and it was, I don't know, but have you ever heard, like, you know when it's your time? 
ground. There's a hard surface and I'm gonna tell you something, it ain't gonna move because you're laying on it, so you need to rise up and you need to rise above it, and you need to start moving when you get knocked down, how long are you gonna stay down? When you lose your job, when you lose that loved one, regardless if it's your husband, your wife, your child, whatever it is, do you have the ability to go through the hurt and the pain of that loss regardless of what you're going through? The best time you know that you are strong is when you're at the weakest point of your life. When you are so far down at home, you're looking up and you don't see no light, but yet you know there's an end to this darkness, that's when you'll find out just how strong you really are, this is a process and you have to hurt just a little bit so you can understand what it means to be strong. Like, you know it's that moment, it's like, enough is enough. I can't tell you, people have asked me before, Eric, when you get your PhD? I'm like, I'll, I'll get it done. ET, how far are you in the process? Finish all my coursework, I just gotta write the dissertation. But it was something about that night that was different. It was almost the end of the year. And I remember Carl, listen to me very closely, guys. I'm being real with you. I didn't even have a conversation with Carl. Like, we never even talked about it afterwards. I never said anything to him about it, but I felt like I felt this, this guilt. I felt, I felt like this embarrassment. Like, and for real, he wasn't like speaking directly to me. He was just saying, you know, AE, hey, I think my wife's probably going to finish her degree before you finish yours. And I'm talking about like it pierced. Like it pierced, and I and I, I just remember like we were talking afterwards, and I didn't hear anything. Like, bro, have you ever been in a conversation and it, it just shifts, and somebody's talking to you, and like you can't hear the words that are coming out of their mouth? I didn't hear anything he said. I just kept it like, E, when are you gonna get this done, E? Misery. It will continue to do all that is necessary to succeed. Misery. It's on a mission to take everything away from you. Because your mind is very powerful. Bring in the goodness. Moving with a purpose. Conditioning your mind is what this is about. Today is that day. And when and if tomorrow comes for you, be even more powerful. Be stronger than you've ever been. Don't give up on your hopes. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on yourself. Just keep moving forward if you think that you're going through something so bad right now. Wait until tomorrow. If tomorrow comes for you, look at the person next to you. Look at people all over the world if you ever come in contact with certain individuals and ask yourself if they're going through a lot more than what I'm going through because honestly, there are always going to be people that are going through a lot more than you're going through right now when you're down find a way to get up. I've been there, I go through it like anybody else, but I have a job to do in this world and so do you. Self-discipline comes from within. It's a desire, it's being able to understand that you've got to get the work in. Rectify in yourself. Believe in yourself. Keep that faith in yourself. Don't let the outside interference stop your growth. Don't let foes that doubted you and said that you did not have it hold you back. Don't let the losses keep you down. Because if you're down, how would you understand what it means to get up? What is good about being miserable? What is misery doing for you? What has misery done for you lately? Has it given you everything that you need? Has it made you a better person? You got to be willing to go further and harder than you've ever gone in your life. You can't depend on all the mechanical things, the alarm clock, your cell phone, or sometimes, even people, sometimes it's just you, you got to be willing to wake up and be about your business on a daily basis, let's just say for. Example, you're the type of person that can't seem to get away from all of the cravings you can't do. This without this, you can't do this without that, you need your coffee, you can't stop. Eating chocolate, all of these things you keep saying that you can't do. Well, let me remind you, can't can never do anything for you in the first place. So discipline starts with you, you have to be willing to be hungry. Having self-confidence is difficult. I would lie to your face if I said otherwise. It would be easy to tell you that having self-confidence is easy and give you a few simple steps so that you can achieve it. 
but it is not. Although, not for that reason, it is impossible. With this in mind, there is a long way to go, and all you have to do is work on yourself. To a lesser extent, not having self-confidence means a sign of humility, an alarm that shows us that we are not perfect and we must continue to improve, nor are we better than anyone else. Because we always tend to see successful people with 100% confidence in themselves, who then end up being a blind look at themselves. Let's think about it in this way. What's the use of having confidence and self-esteem if you're not even really looking at yourself in the mirror? In this life, and in the eyes of God, you must always remain humble, because everything that goes up, if it is in the wrong hands, must come down. But now, it's one thing to have a little low self-confidence, but quite another to cross the barrier where you think you shouldn't be alive, and you don't have confidence in your projects and goals in life. I will tell you the truth, you deserve that and much more, because every day you fight an endless battle, from the moment you wake up and get out of bed until you lay your head onto the pillow. You know well that you carry out both an external and internal war, so you know more than anyone that you deserve what you want. In this way, you must reinforce that confidence in yourself. Because just as you perceive yourself, do not doubt that they will perceive you in the same way, and if you have more security in your steps, you will be able to change the way people see you and they will respect you more. As Mark Twain said, a man cannot be comfortable without his own approval. You are the only person who can define who you are, and you have the key to trust yourself. No one will come to your house and give you compliments, or give you the magic formula for you to realize your worth. The mere fact of wanting to have more confidence in yourself realizes that you want to improve. And that is something positive, because the person who thinks that he is complete is the one who has the most problems, because he is a fool and blinded by his own compliments. Self-confidence is not just a state of mind, it is a change in your whole being. As Oprah Winfrey said, it is confidence in our bodies, minds, and spirits that allows us to keep looking for new adventures. You already know that the physical is not everything, but it does change your point of view a lot when looking at yourself in the mirror. Don't lie to me. Every time you dress in those clothes or dresses that you like the most, you feel so much better, right? So use that to your advantage. Wear clothes that you like and make you feel comfortable and beautiful. Cut your hair, change your look, make a radical change, and show the world that you want to live like never before. Life is beautiful, and nobody is going to live it in your place, so take charge of your life and have that confidence that you are missing, and you will know that the world will be completely different. Also, not having self-confidence is an eternal limitation in your life, and there are some things that will prevent you from doing it if you don't change your way of being for the better. If you want to party with your friends and you don't have much self-confidence, you limit yourself to being in a corner and you won't enjoy anything, or you won't be able to meet the love of your life. You couldn't do big projects either, because you'll doubt yourself. At that moment, you should automatically say, yes, I am worth this and much more, because I am capable of managing this and carrying out my projects and being successful. Believe me, as soon as you try and get over that damn barrier, everything will be easier, and it will seem like you will have a streak of good luck for the amazing things that happen to you. But of course, it is not magic. You will be the one who puts the machinery into operation, and it will be life that gets to work for you to achieve your dreams. Because you know those dreams are worth it. So, if you fall, get up again and again and again.